Yeah, clickety. <sighs> we are now live on YouTube. <laughs> Miracle of miracles. And we are live on Facebook. Yay, here we are, finally. Goodness. <laughs> Some things, you know, everything went way too smoothly with the setup. And then I took five minutes to clean off my station and everything went to hell in a handbag. So here we are. Here we are. <laughs> <laughs> Except on face to face, we've got that 10 minute timer running on Facebook again. What? Oh, I think you're in the wrong live because it, oh, it, it creates could be. a new one. Yeah, it could be. All right. Regardless, we made it, finally. I think. We think. I do have a couple of things. Got to send some shout outs and some thank yous. Um, first of all, got to send a shout out to my girl, Sandy. Um, Sandy has a ton of uh, Deckwart Media fluid acrylics in stock right now. And she has them on sale 20% off. And then she contacted me this morning to let me know that anybody that's watching today, if you use the coupon code Tracy M, it'll give you another 10% off. So it's just Tracy M, all capital letters. Just go to her website, send her an email, tell her that you're interested in the media fluid acrylics. Have a look, see what she's got around. Uh, I know she's got lots. So uh, check it out. She's got great pricing and uh, my girl Sandy's going to make sure you get whatever you need. And if you don't know what her website is, it is sandymctierdesigns.com. So go and check that out. And I'll talk some more about that in a little bit because we're going to be talking about the fluid acrylics. And um, we had happy mail this week. Hey. <laughs> we love happy mail, but this was really cute. My girl, Gail Woolsey, I got a box from her yesterday, opened it up. I got cookies. He got cookies. <laughs> Gail sent him cookies. Thank you for cookies. <laughs> so, but I got a beautiful card, a really sweet, lovely little note in it. It was just beautiful. And then she got me a queen bee. She was at a charity event, um, a charity festival. Check this out. Is this not the cutest? So she's got a little crown queen bee. I love it. Mwah. Thank you, Gail. Appreciate that so much. I'm going to so, get a cookie. He's, <laughs> <laughs> he thinks of his stomach at all sorts of times. Um, but yeah, I love getting happy mail. And this was so sweet of you. Thank you very much. And you made his day because he opened it up. Of course, the cookie thing, um, especially because we're Canadian, you never know what's going to be in those cookies. But thankfully, they are just chocolate chunk. So, Gail, thank you for that. You made his day. Opening up that box and finding a pack of cookies in it was just the answer. <laughs> so, I have a cookie. He has a cookie. So, <laughs> really? Cookie. They're great big cookies, too. Big ch chocolate chunk, aren't they? Chocolate chunk. Yeah. You made his day. Send him butter chicken in the mail. He'd be happy. Mm. <laughs> Well, maybe not. No. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm, the last couple of weeks, I've been feeling really festive. I've been really looking forward to the Christmas season again. Uh, it's my favorite holiday. So I kind of lose my grip on reality over the holidays. I bake a lot. <laughs> Don't you smirk. <laughs> okay, I bake a little. <laughs> I bake a little and I do a lot of painting for the holidays because I just, I love to decorate for the holidays. So for the last couple of weeks, my brain, a couple of weeks, couple of months, my brain has been in Christmas mode and that has not eased off. I tried painting flowers the other day and couldn't do it. It was just like, nope, I wanted to paint. I needed to paint something Christmas. So um, I came up with this little, I don't know, Santa gnome, I guess, this deck the halls piece. I thought it was fun and I think he's cute. And I don't do gnomes, really. Not really. I've seen so many really cute gnomes out there, and I just sort of, I don't do gnomes. And then I was sitting there doodling, and I came up with gnomes. Not just <laughs> any gnome, but a Santa gnome. And my friend Beth at Decoart uh, messaged me. She goes, that looks a lot like those darn gnomes that you talk about. I said, no, they don't look a lot like them. <laughs> a little like them. They look a lot like those damn gnomes. <laughs> I so, said it anyway. <laughs> I said it anyway. <laughs> four years ago, three years ago, uh, we were in Germany at the Christmas market. Everywhere. Everywhere. When we were at the uh, 
uh, paper world, at Christmas world, they call it. It is this huge portion of the trade show that has everything you can imagine uh, Christmas related. Everywhere we looked, gnomes, everywhere. So we thought, oh, you think gnomes are going to trend? <laughs> Maybe. So yes. So we, we, we were seeing them long before they actually hit the general market. So uh, yeah, interesting. But I've had a lot of fun with the little guys in the last couple of weeks. And I just, I think they're easy. They're fun. You can do all sorts of cool things with them. And they're just cute. Let's face it. They're just cute. Nope, so there's Jessica Gillerin and Deb. Hey, Deb. Deb A. Deb Antonic. Deb Antonic. Antonic. Wow. <laughs> she, she made it pretty early. She did. What time is it? Oh, it's one. So it's, you know, she's probably got her first cup of coffee in her hand by now. <laughs> she's not awake yet. <laughs> Don't kid yourself. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. I'm not awake yet. <laughs> so, I just finished a night shift. Yeah, he worked uh, all night, didn't get home until 7 this morning, so, yeah, he's not even human until I'm he's had that first. Fumes. Yeah, he's not human until he's had a cup of coffee in him, um, and I'm working on my second cup of tea of the day, so. Today we're going to paint uh, Deck the Halls, which is this fun little guy. I think he's fun. Um, I had more fun doing the background. <laughs> Mm -hmm. I like doing the background and all the, the you know, the fun stuff that's stenciling techniques. But once I got him finished is um, when it suddenly occurred to me that I could have gone, you know, one or two or five steps further with it. And um, I got playing with some snow text. I got playing with some glitter. Yes, we're playing with glitter today. Get over it. Um, and uh, I got this thought went through my head <laughs> that it needed snowflakes. It needed more than just these stenciled on snowflakes. So um, I talked to a friend of mine named Karen Beaupre. She's the owner of uh, Southern Ridge Trading. Oh, oh, oh my God, look at these. How gorgeous are these? So she's got these beautiful, super delicate little chipboard snowflakes. So I've got a bunch of those painted up. So we're gonna use those. And so I ordered a bunch for uh, the website. So these are freaking amazing. They're gorgeous. The detail is incredible. She does the most amazing things. But the downside to chipboard, especially for us decorative painters, is it's very fragile and it's difficult to paint, get into all those little details. So um, I had to find a, a really easy way to paint these. So I'm going to show you a nifty little trick for that. And then we're going to show you how we're going to use those on our deck the halls. And just for, you know, for giggles, I um, I prepared some of the little gnome ornaments, so we'll go over those too. So, what do you think, Chief? I don't know. Apparently we got some people having some issues with the YouTube and Facebook's running smooth. Yeah. Uh, I don't know what I the... I don't know what's wrong with the YouTubes. With the YouTubes. Everything looks good on this end. Yeah. Could I, be just their stream or yeah. I don't know. There's some weird stuff happens on 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 the YouTube's. A lot of it has to do with the yeah. internet speed and you know, with the internets. Okay. Alright. So if you guys are ready to get started, so am I. So there's this is the damn gnome. there's the damn gnome. <laughs> <laughs> you can bring it closer to you. I think he's really cute. I think you know he's fun. He's simple. He's not overdone. Um, I initially put you know a sprig of more traditional styled holly in his hands, and it didn't look right. Um, so I took it out and I just simplified it and came up with this. And then I couldn't think of what to call this. Could just be a gnome standing you know <coughs> hip deep in snow. Um, so I decided to have a little fun and I figured, what do you do with Holly? You deck the halls with boughs of Holly. So that's, that's how I came about this name, just sort of a roundabout way of getting there, but I got there. So, um, I have one already prepped for this. It's already face coated in, but we're going to talk about that background first. <laughs> Zombie Bob and damn gnome. <laughs> The damn gnome. I, well, you know what? It's every time we'd sit down for a 
product development meeting or trend reports or whatever, gnomes were in it for about the last four years. So yeah, after a while, they became those damn gnomes. <laughs> but they are stinking cute. You can't get around that. So I'm going to tape this stencil in place. I love this buffalo check and I'm absolutely obsessed with plaid not just buffalo check but I'm obsessed with plaid these days and um, so we're working on a plaid stencil Miss Sandy and I are putting one of those together so we can add that to the M square line oh and we have giveaways today too yes we, we have a I don't one. know what they are you don't know what they are because I haven't told you yet oh <laughs> That's probably why I don't know what they are. We have two sets of Dynasty Stencil Pro stencil brushes, a one inch and a half inch nice. stencil brush. And with that comes a star ornament set. So it's a five piece set that builds a star when you wire it together. And a set, uh, there's um, two colors for the festive colors and one of the Decorate um, Holographic Illusions, the glitter, their newest one. And then um, two bottles of uh, galaxy glitters for the festive season. It's got, got some gold and some green and some reds. and So it's a good one. Probably, I think the value of it would be about $25 to $30. That's a pretty good door prize, I think. <laughs> or a pretty good giveaway for today. Mm -hmm. So there will be two people with that. And then uh, we have a couple of craft gals and bags to give away too. The little, uh, the pencil kits. Nice. Do you have the pro stencil brushes for sale? I will have. I'm waiting for them to get here. It doesn't go up on the website until they show up here. Yeah, because otherwise we could be waiting a while the way things are these days. So they have been ordered and we are waiting for them to turn up. So we also have fugly brushes coming and we have riggers coming. Yay. Things have just taken a while. Uh, Excuse me. Certainly. <laughs> well done. Eat your cookie too fast. So, <coughs> pardon me. So we're going to stencil this, and I'm using a little bit of lamp back. Now the lamp black. Now the background of this is two coats of holly green. I don't know what possessed me to grab this green. Mm -hmm to do this background. I'm glad I, I did because I really like this green now that I've started using it. Um, I think they should call it Holly Hanley green, personally. Really? Holly uses it quite a bit. Is this gnome too hard for a beginner? Oh, no. No, no, no. There's, there's a lot of different little steps in it, but it's really, as far as skills go, it's not a difficult piece to paint. So a beginner should be able to ace this one. Especially since you're going to be watching how it's done. So I'm just stenciling circular fashion, change directions frequently. This is lamp black over top of holly green. Well, apparently somebody asked for uh, gift certificates for Christmas. Oh, well, we have them. <laughs> oh, specifically your gift certificates. Yep, we have them. <laughs> <laughs> and we sent out two as door prizes last week, so... What size is your tag? I believe that's a one. This is a six by ten. Six by ten. Yeah. These okay. ones, I get these ones. We have some on the website. Mm. Uh, we have more coming. They should be here on Monday. <laughs> um, I ordered in like 24 last week. Those disappeared inside of five minutes. Um, so I ordered a pile more. So we'll have more in on Monday. How's Dot today? <laughs> Dot, Miss Dot is lounging today. Yeah, she is lounging. Uh, she's quite put out with me because I wasn't here last night. Yeah. So her bed came into our room last night. So she gets lonely. She doesn't like to be left alone. Uh, another 12 hour shift tonight. Wee! I love green plaid. I
Hang on, guys. Well, oh, hang on, guys. Hello. We got sound. Yep, we're good. We got it. <laughs> we should be back. Yes? No? Maybe. Are we back? Does... Sound back. Okay. Yeah, sound back. We're back. So I'm going to check my buffalo. That looks nice. So I'm going to remove my stencil. I'm going to dry this real quick, just so I don't smear paint when I reposition the stencil. Now, <laughs> when I painted the first one, I kind of goofed. When I moved the stencil over, I whoopsied and I ended up with, you know, having stripes there, or black one there and stripes. I got it all wrong anyway. Uh, so, I goofed on the first one. Luckily for me, the the gnome covered my mistake up. But um, it wasn't until I got it all done that I realized I'd done it, and I was like, "Oh crap!" Is this one inch check? This is the one inch buffalo check, and a half inch stencil brush. So you're going to move the stencil along. Make sure when you line it up that you line it up with the correct spacing because if you don't, you're going to end up with black where you're not supposed to, like a black square where you're not supposed to have it. So just take a little care when you're lining stencils up. I wasn't paying attention and I whoopsied. I was working on a piece, the piece for the December 4th class. Mm -hmm. And, oh my God, I just, for the life of me, you know, we all have days where you can mess up the Lord's Prayer. Well, I should not have been allowed to paint flowers that day. Oh, no. It was just horrendous. There's no other word for it. Miss Sandy McTeer is in the chat. Yeah, Miss Sandy. She's already putting up links <laughs> on the Facebook. People on Facebook, click that link if you want to get the, the itty bitty snowflakes. I love They're it. So delicate. Wow. They are incredibly delicate, but I've got a really neat way for painting them so you don't have to worry about breaking them. They're very cool. I love Southern Ridge Trading. They, she creates just the most beautiful uh, embellishments for things. I was on her site yesterday. She's got the most incredible red truck piece. Oh, yeah? It's gorgeous. It's all laser cut. It's multiple layers. So it's a background with a frame with a dimensional truck with Christmas trees and lettering. It's gorgeous. Nice, beautiful Christmas sign. I loved it. I'm thinking I'm going to have to get one. Oh, there's Lori Vindemeyer. Snoop. Now I'm going to move this along one more time, but I am going to dry this. What size snowflakes are you using? I'm using the one inch, um, I, but I'm going to show you how to paint these because it's the first thing anybody's going to do is how in heck are we going to paint those? But I have a really slick technique for it. So, so I'm going to line up my stencil. Like so. Come on. There we go. Tape it into place. Now we're going to finish off this edge. And I just did it again. Oh no, I'm good, I think. No, no. I'm not. <laughs> Jeez <laughs> Louise. Okay. Need to do this right. <laughs> Honestly. There. Hello. There you good go. grief. Hello from Michigan. We they had snow in Michigan yesterday. Oh yeah. Yep. <laughs> and in uh, Ohio, Lindsay at uh, Cupboard Distributing had said something about them getting snow yesterday. Caps lock is cruise control for cool. <laughs> is it? <laughs> I thought it was just yelling. <laughs> Nobody thinks it's yelling. It's just bigger letters. It's just bigger letters. Yeah. So I move this thing along. Tape uh, it in place. 
<laughs> Linda Johnson. At my grandson's six, uh, six year birthday party. But I'm listening. Well, <laughs> uh, they had snow in Wisconsin. Yep. But yeah, there's a few places in the U.S. got snow this week. And we didn't. No. <laughs> we're still we're still in double digits today. Yeah. Mind you, that's going to change. He has 12 yeah. degrees out there today. That's going to change. Uh, we have snow in the forecast for next weekend. So I'm amazed we haven't already had some. We've had an incredibly mild fall. So far. So far. Mm. Okay. So. Yeah, the first time I did this, I like, seriously goofed it up. <laughs> da -da -da -da. Texas in the house. Hello, Texas. <laughs> That's one place you don't often see snow, but they had some last year. Yeah. Once in a lifetime. Yeah. I mean... In a place that never gets snow, even a small amount of snow can cause a lot of damage, a lot of havoc. There we go. No snow in South Georgia. <laughs> Isn't that where Sandy is? Sandy's in Central Georgia. Oh, she's in Central. Mm -hmm. She is in Byron, Georgia. Byron. Yeah. It's in my father's name. Byron. <laughs> Okay, so I've got my stencil in place. Now, um, I'm going to give that a second to dry, but I wanted to um, show you. For the background on these little guys, those little gnome tags, I did exactly the same thing. I just used the half-inch buffalo check for that one. That's the only difference. The technique remains exactly the same. So I'm going to sand this lightly because I want to distress it somewhat and it is a light sanding I'm not I don't want to saw right through all of that paint that I just went to so much trouble to put on China got over 20 inches of snow okay they can keep it <laughs> oh I have a feeling we're going to be seeing that before too long Although, who knows, last year we hardly had any. I don't think we had three feet the whole winter. There we go. So, lightly sanded, just enough to smooth it out. Any little rough bits are taken off. And I've got a little bit of wear here and there, but that's okay. So, next step is to give this a little age. <laughs> Dare I ask? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe use a smaller font to whisper. Okay. <laughs> I thought whispering was um, italics. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I'm just going to float around the outside edge. It's not a perfect float. Neatness doesn't count. Perfection is to be avoided at all costs. <laughs> They're asking what grit for sanding. Oh, mine is like super fine. I think it's a 180 or a 220. I'm just smoothing it out. I'm not wearing it too much of it away. That's super fine? Yeah. 180 or 220? Yeah, it's a smooth grip, soft grip. Okay. I'm just, this one's a medium to fine. Medium to fine, okay. Yeah. I'm used to, you know, 800, 700. I know. Yeah, for wood, it's just something to take. <laughs> Not quite the same thing. <laughs> 180 to 240 is, you know, I'm taking stuff off. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so I've just put a really loose float, nothing perfect, around the outside edge. Including primer, yes. Yep. I'm going to dry it, and then we're going to put a wash of asphaltum over top of everything. I love this green. So, you know me, I like my asphaltum. 
a little bit of a schwaltem. Oh, yay! What? Somebody did a random act of kindness. Nice! Okay, she uh, paid it back, really. Okay. Uh, went to McDonald's for breakfast this morning. No judging. No. <laughs> was in a hurry to get back to class, and the drive through was crazy. A uh, really nice man let me go ahead of him, so in return, I paid for his order. Nice. That's a nice thing to do. So I'm just thinning out a little bit of asphaltum. Yeah? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There we go. No sound, no sound, no sound, no sound. Yeah, yep, 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 yep. <laughs> there's a delay. Yep, there's a bit of a delay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And uh, what was the color of that green again? Holly green. Holly green. Yep. Oh, Dick words holly green. You're sounding like a bag of popcorn under there. I still need another four hours of sleep. <laughs> there we go so that is our background for this piece it's super easy it's just a stencil with a glaze over top of it just to knock it back a bit then once it's completely dry you just trace and transfer your line drawings on I used a white graphite for mine I used the decor graphite paper that's my favorite one and the one I'm using is almost finished because you can see when it's tracing it's got all these little lines through it so oh, goodness. was the last coat a sealer no the last coat was just a wash of thin dish faltum. that's all it is it just darkens the background it just tones the background that's all it does tones. just brings that's it down a notch. Tones. so the colors that i used for this piece country red or tomato red or Santa red, whatever red you've got that you like, use it. You don't have to use exactly what I use. Um, I've got a little bit of Scarlet and Red Alert here and Tomato Red because I couldn't find my bottle of Country Red. Go figure. And um, the nose and that little lip down there are cotton candy. The leaves in the holly are sour apple. I use two coats. It actually covered quite well. And the same with the scarf. The scarf is also uh, done with the sour apple. The shading for this one is um, plantation pine, or you can use the sap green in the fluid acrylics. Um, I, plantation pine is my favorite, and sap green in the fluid acrylics is my other favorite. I tend to switch them. To me, they're interchangeable. I can use both of them. So. Uh, my plantation pine for all of my shading and we have to have a little lamp black on the palette because we're going to be mixing our shading color for those reds and I also used a little bit of fiery red neon if I can find my fiery red there it is my fiery red neon I'm going to use that for my highlight colors on my on my uh, little gnome here. I love these. These things are freaking fantastic. And uh, you know what? I'm going to grab the neon green too because why not? So we'll have a little bit fun with that. Now these little guys, uh, the other thing we're going to play with today is this. This is the Decorate Snow Rider. Um, it's essentially snow text and a squeeze bottle. I love this stuff. Look, it's, this is the best stuff ever for creating all sorts of fun little textures and dimension. And then, of course, just to annoy Renee, glitter. we have glitter. Sparkle, sprinkle, uh, and glitter. 
finest kind to best one, glamour dust, deck work glamour dust. Oh, Linda Sufranco has got an issue. For some reason, I had to base coat everything with warm white. The color did not want to cover. Which color? You think in... Probably the reds and the greens. Probably the reds and the yeah, greens. Yeah, it's never a bad thing to put a coat of warm white under it. It's just going to boost the color a bit, and it'll give you a little less, a little better coverage. You have to have glitter. Mm. Must. It's no. a must. No. Must, must, must. No, no, no. <laughs> so, as for brushes, um, I'm going to use a quarter inch, a three eighths and a half inch angled shader. You could, I'm using... I tend to switch back and forth between black gold and faux squirrel because those are my favorites. So those are the brushes that I'm going to use today. And of course we're going to use number two or number zero rigger to do that lettering. Yay! Because that'll be fun. I love doing the lettering. And I have some fun little, like, you know, some really easy tricks to make it a little simpler. So we're going to start by doing the shading on our hat and our robe and just sort of establish him right off the bat. So get a brush wet. Where's my country red? Well, I got a piece of good news for you. What's that? There's uh, 203 people watching you right now. Oh, cool. That's the wrong way. <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking for my country red, but I don't know where it is. There it is. <laughs> I want to see the zombie 203 times now. <laughs> Wait. Yeah, they gotta hit the like button to see that zombie. Do they know it? Yeah, they gotta hit the like button if they want to see the zombie. <laughs> zombie just kills me. <laughs> <laughs> we have no idea why that's there. He's tried to get rid of it, but it won't go away. Hmm. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> I'll replay that one. Oh, eh, never mind. It's coming back. Where's Bob? I. Bob's right there. There's Bob. Bob is never too far away. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so uh, we're going to start by shading our um, uh, hat up here. I've got a little bit of country red or tomato red, whatever red you want to work with. And uh, I'm going to dig out my, my gemsonias. I uh, have a little bit of lamp black on my palette. I'm going to move my paints out of the way here. Um, <laughs> The zombie is going crazy. <laughs> Asking you shall receive. <laughs> so I wanted to show you how I do this. So I've got a little bit of uh, Joe Sonia's fast dry glaze in my brush. I'm going to pick up just a tiny amount of lamp black on the tip of that brush. Tiny amount. And blend it. And then I'm going to pick up some country red. I am going to adjust the camera. And then I'm going to darken that red with small quantities of lamp black until I get, there we go. So I've got a nice deep dark red now, almost a burgundy tone. And I've done that just by mixing a little bit of lamp black with my base color, which is that country red. That autofocus is annoying, I understand. And this is the color that we're going to use to shade our little gnome here and I'm going to pull that color along the edge of the hat. Now in my infinite wisdom I decided I needed some holly on his hat so I drew some in on the line drawing but in the original piece it wasn't there so. <laughs> that zombie's going to get tired. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay he's a zombie. <laughs> So I've got a little bit of that, that red mixture on my brush and I'm going to shade up the, I wanted to say the back side, but it's the right side of this gnome's hat. Bob has been replaced with gnomes. Gnomes. I could make a, a zombie gnome. Oh my goodness. <laughs> a gnome? Gnome. Well, isn't that how it's spelled? 
It's not a Gnoblin. <laughs> no, it's not a Gnoblin. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a knife either. <laughs> or a Gnelf. So I'm just shading all of these little areas with that brush mix. I just find using your base color, it already sets the tone. So if you're just making it a little bit darker, then you're good to go. So I'm going to shade underneath our candy cane and our mitten. And underneath his beard. A gazombie? A gazombie. <laughs> <laughs> and under his scarf. The fun part about just doing a simple brush mix like this is it's going to give you another one. The tone is already set because you're using the same base color and then adding a little black to it just changes the value of the color. Apparently uh, Linda's mom Mary is on watching on Facebook <laughs> for some reason can't say hi. Oh no. Well I'm gonna say big hi Mary. Hope you're well. Hope you're doing well. Linda's keeping me busy, just so you know. Linda is absolutely freaking fearless. Every time we give her a challenge, she's just on it like what I'm like unbelievable. She jumps into it with both feet. Utterly fearless. It's fabulous. So, and then I'm going to shade all along here. And again, neatness doesn't really count. We're going to do this again anyway in a minute. So I'm going to rinse my brush, but already his robes are starting to take shape. But I need a stencil. I need a 1 8 polka dot. I'm kind of obsessed with polka dots. I mean, almost everything I paint's got polka dots in it. <laughs> but I love polka dots. So I've got a 1 8 polka dot stencil. And we're going to put polka dots on his hat and on his robe. And we're going to do that with a little bit of warm white. He's going to come together pretty quickly. So the trick with this one is we do not want these polka dots to be perfectly white, like fully opaque. We want them to be a little bit, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Imperfect, I think is a good word. So I'm using an almost dry stencil brush and a very light touch. I don't want these to be too perfect, nor am I trying to get all of the polka dots just, you know. So I've used a very light touch and very little paint. And so we got polka dots. And then I'm going to move this down to his robe, but I am not reloading the stencil brush. And then I'm going to do the same thing because I want these polka dots to be a little imperfect. And there's going to be a few polka dots where there shouldn't be polka dots, but that's okay too. So now I've got polka dots everywhere. <laughs> so we're going to clean up a couple of spots. I got polka dots on these mittens here. We don't want them there. So we're just going to put a coat of black over top. And that will get rid of our polka dots. But we will have maintained polka dots on the hat and the rope. Now, if you decide you don't want polka dots, um, little stars would be cute on this guy. Um, Little checks would be really cute too. You could do almost anything. 
Or you could completely reverse this and just do like a nice green with all of the asphaltum and the shading on the back. Skip the stencil, use the half inch stencil on the robes. That would be cute too. Can't wait to see what you have in store for next week. <laughs> Well, I'm still in Christmas mode. I'm sorry if you guys are not Christmassy oriented, but I am going to be in Christmas mode for a little bit. Um, <laughs> he laughs. They tease me. I did not laugh. I snickered. You snickered. Okay. Uh, oh, Shandy. Sheila Landry. Good day, Miss Sheila. She's here. She's been busy, girl. Don't forget the other arm. Nope. Oh, there's polka dots in there. <laughs> Christmas truck question mark? You know, I was thinking that might be a nice one to do. The Christmas truck. Yeah. Might be. It's November. I know. And everybody is gearing up for the Christmas holidays. No. Yeah. Christmas holidays is in December. The holiday is. Preparations for said holiday begin in November. I'm pretty sure they start in August. Here they do. <laughs> <laughs> Not everywhere. <laughs> so, now that we've got those polka dots in place, we're going to do one more shading. And again, we're going to do it with that brush mix of the lamp black and the country red. And this is just going to give us additional shading. It's going to give us nice dimension, but it's also going to ground those polka dots so that they become part of the robe because they're not buried by this. So that little bit of shading gives us a nice little shape and contrast and it puts all of those polka dots where they're supposed to be. So and as I said, this works up pretty quickly once you start doing the shading in here. You want to make sure you get in and around that scarf. There we go. So our shading has been deepened and it doesn't look like much until you start putting in some highlights. So our first highlight is going to be a little bit of, um, you can use literally whatever you want. Um, I'm going to use a little bit of neon and I have a little bit of red alert here. I'm just using what's sitting on my table. Is Dot not cooperating? Nope. Didn't want to listen to Dad today. <laughs> so I'm just putting a little float of Red Alert in here. You just need something with a, a little lighter in value. or um, And I'm going to float down that side, but I'm bringing a little bit like a blush of that color out onto the belly. And then at the edges of the sleeves, right here, putting a little float of that red alert. And this is where I really like to see that change in value is on these high points, that little float of red alert here on the edges of that hat, just like that. And I'm going to dry it, and then we're going to go over that with a little bit of the neon red, that fiery red. It's just a fun way to finish out this hat and this robe. Our daughter's two-legged foster can walk nine kilometers in her wheelchair. 
Well. And she wants to keep going. <laughs> <laughs> it's a lot of pent up energy for a dog with two legs. <laughs> well, this dot's been a little stubborn because the weather has not been the greatest. It's no. been wet and she does not do wet. No. She doesn't like wet weather. She has a poncho. So, yeah, my <laughs> husband brigged a poncho for her so she doesn't have to walk in the rain and get wet. No, so she can walk in the, the rain, rain and not get, get wet. wet. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm just pulling a little of that fiery red. Love this tone. It looks pink in the jar, but yeah, when you put it over top of another red, you get this nice glow, this wonderful fiery tone to it. Just heats everything up nicely. I want all the neons. Oh, I love the, the neons. <laughs> and then to make matters worse, they had to make a whole bunch of these. These are the dark light neons or the black light neons. Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. Just like, they're not hot enough. Now you have to make them jump right out at you. <laughs> that needs a hat umbrella. Oh, those. <laughs> Okay, so I've got some nice little highlights in there. And so we're going to jump to our scarf here. We are going to come back in and do a little bit of dry brushing on this, but we're going to do our scarf next. I'm using a little bit of... Um, they have the light paste neons? Yes, they have neon lights, which are neon pastels. I have all of those too. Jeez. Yeah. Need that Got it. Her paint's like Pokemon. Yeah. Gotta catch them all. Yeah. Gotta catch them all. So I'm going to shade our scarf here. I'm going to come up underneath the beard. I'm using a little bit of plantation pine. And it's going to seem a little heavy handed at first. Turn this upside down because I can never get this shading right if it's upside right. I need to have it this way. <laughs> I want the neons. I got to go shopping. I love the neons. I love the, that punch of color <laughs> that you get, that little bit of heat. I love it. Haven't been able to find the fiery red neon. Love that tone. Uh, where did I see them? Offcraft may have them. Uh, in Canada, check out uh, stockade.ca or countrybear.ca, uh, countrybearwood.ca. Either one, both of them will carry those. So there we are. We have a little shading with our neons. Now, I'm going to put a little bit of matcha green. Glow in the dark Santa. What? <laughs> <laughs> Why not? You need a little bit of matcha green. There we go. I'm going to put a highlight on our scarf with a little bit of matcha green. And then we're going to kick that up with a little neon green. Happiness is when you're looking for your blackboard paint and you come across a box of neons. <gasps> yes! It's even better when you do find your blackboard paint too. <laughs> <laughs> So I'm just highlighting opposite that shadow with just a little float. It's not even a pretty one of uh, a little matcha green. It's slightly different green. It is a bit more white and it also has a bit more yellow. So it kind of looks a little muddy at first, but that's okay. There's a reason why I chose it. I'm going to put a little neon over top of this and you need a little more opacity. I wanted that green to really pop, so I need a little bit more opacity on that scarf. So I'm going to dry this, and then we're going to hit it with that neon green, that thermal green. Love it. I need a separate room for all the, just for the brushes. <laughs> <laughs> she has a separate room just for brushes. <laughs> <laughs> 
I think I'm a little obsessive. Oh, we all are. Yes, you can give her that. <laughs> so I'm just putting right over top of that that uh, matcha green. I'm just putting a float of neon green. And I know it's not really showing up on camera, but <laughs> in real life, it really pops. Brush junkies? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we're all brush junkies. I'm an everything junkie, though. <laughs> Brushes, paints. Oh, uh, anything I'm a craft, craft related. I'm a craft supply junkie. <laughs> Found the neons at our local dollar store. Yeah. Hmm. They have them at ours too. Really? Yeah. I realized I've already supplied the. Uh... Yeah, we have them in every Dollarama, all our major dollar stores. Oh. So I dry that. Yeah. You okay? Yeah, I'm good. <laughs> there we go. It's not OCD, it's just called put it back where you found it. CDO. CDO. Alpha yeah, alphabetical order as it should be. <laughs> <laughs> so our next step for this little guy is to um, work on his nose. Now I used a little bit of uh, country red for this part. And we're going to put a float of country red to the right. And I'm coming in just a little bit from the edge of his nose. Like so. Um, and I'm going to draw that. It's got a little rough edge on it, so we're going to have to fix it. There we go. That's better. All right. Doesn't look so rough now. So we have a little shadow on one side of his nose. Now we have to put a highlight on the other side of his nose. And San Santa no means a lush. <laughs> He's got a red, rosy nose. Yeah. And then Does I'm that going... make Santa Claus a drunk driver? Flyer. Flyer. Yeah. Mm. Mm. So he's a pilot. <laughs> Yay. So the highlight goes on the opposite side of the nose. And in the same fashion, I'm coming in just slightly from the edge of the nose with thinned warm white on a nice soft highlight. And then I'm going to use, if I can find my good liner brush, there it is. I'm going to use a little bit of warm white just to put a final highlight on our dear Santa's nose. And so is Rudolph's nose. I mean, his is all red. Santa's is just a little red. <laughs> so there is our little stroke. It's just a thin stroke of white on the upper left side of the nose. Hopefully you can see its placement. Why do you leave a small outline on the nose? It just, for a couple of reasons. Um, one, helps prevent you from taking your float out, out onto the other colors. Uh, but at the same time, it also gives you the ability to produce a bit more dimension. If I take it right to the edge, it's a flat surface. If I leave a space, it elevates it slightly. So now it gives it a little bit more dimension. It's like painting berries the same way. It makes them appear more spherical as opposed to just round. So we have dimension on the nose. So I think it's time to worry about the holly. It's holly time. Santa and Rudolph get lit together. <laughs> lit. Lit. Getting lit. I'm the young in here. What? When you get lit. How do you know this? Because I'm older than you. Yeah, that's true. What is what is lit? L I D. Getting drunk. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. You get lit.
Is this like new stuff or? No. No, uh, it's been been a thing for a while. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so now we're going to paint our holly. Uh, the base coat that I used, same as the scarf. And so we're going to use the same colors to shade and highlight with. It's an old saying, before your time, Renee. <laughs> yeah. So I'm going to float down the center vein of my leaves. This is just a little thinned plantation pine. And this is going to give us the shape of our leaves. It also defines the way that they curve. <clears throat> Yeah. How else could they fly around in the cold winter night? Yeah. They'd have to be loaded. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah. I remember my first ration. <laughs> <laughs> I have never... I always thought it was a myth. The What's... whole rum ration thing. No. For Arctic training. No. Yeah. It's not a myth. No. And... That rum is horrible. <laughs> well, first of all, you have to appreciate rum. And it's Lamb's Navy. Yep. Ugh. Well, it wasn't bought for its quality. <laughs> <laughs> so, like I said, I'm just shading down the center vein of each of these leaves with a float of plantation pine. Go to south. Oops. Why did it have to be Lamb? There's so much better... Appleton's Estate. <laughs> <laughs> Couldn't pick Appleton's, Appleton's Estate? estate. <laughs> One of the finest Jamaican rums out there? No, it had to be Lamb's Navy. Probably brewed in somebody's toilet. <laughs> From Newfoundland. <laughs> it's Lamb's Navy, not Screech. Yeah. They kept a good... Screech would have been better! Yeah. <laughs> True. <laughs> That's very true. I'm tasting it right now. That was a bad memory. Especially from somebody who doesn't drink. <laughs> it's the Arctic Circle. It's a bad memory. <laughs> true. Okay, so I've got my shading in. I'm going to dry this real quick, and then we're going to put a small float at the base of the leaf. You know, somebody asked me the other day why I do that. Um, having that little float implies the curve in the leaf. So even though I've got a line down the middle, if I put a float at the base of the leaf like so, it gives that a little bit more credence and so it looks a bit more like the leaf is bending. And that is why I put that little float at the base of the leaf. So it's no longer just a flat surface, if you catch my drift. And in this case, it also gives us a nice little shadow for those berries. Now, I base coated my berries first with a little float of, or a little float, with a little bit of um, warm white because I'm going to, I want these berries to be really bright. And by putting that white base down, I'm not going to be, the red is not going to be influenced by the color underneath it. Not that dark green at any rate. I do want it to be influenced but by the white, not by... Okay. So this is not like super tidy floats. They're just enough color. But you can see that it gives a curve to those petals by having that float down at the base of the leaf. So once that's done, now you're going to put a highlight in. And now remember how I did the scarf with that little bit of matcha green? Oh. Anya says, in Germany it's hard to find products from Decor, but sometimes I find some. 
but not the nice colors. Um, you know what? If you're living in Germany, go to Rayar. Rayar is uh, a decor uh, distributor, and all of their paints match with the decor color lineup. Boom. Boom. So, yes, Knowledge. if you are looking for, living in Germany and you're looking for um, uh, Americana or Decorwork colors, go and check out Rare because they're going to have everything that you need. Awesome people. Uh, both Sandy and I have had the wonderful opportunity to work with them when we were in Germany last year, the year before. Uh, they were fabulous. Um, and so exciting to deal with them because they're just such a dynamic group. They Why have is it cracking so much today. So yeah, if that's what you need, hunt, go check out Rare. Anything with a Rare label, they will be able to help you. Great company. Any wonderful things, especially Christmas time. Oh my gosh. Sandy and I are always given the opportunity to go into the secret room when we visit them oh. in Germany. <laughs> the secret room is all of the newest products that they're bringing out for the next year. Ah. So it, it's exciting. So, but yeah. I can't keep up with Tracy. Nobody can. It's impossible. Everybody's loving the zombie. So... I've got a little highlight of that matcha green. I, all I did was on that uh, center vein, I come out to the point, like so, a little bit on the opposite side. And so now that curve that we worked so hard at has been amplified because now we've got that highlight in there. But watch what happens when you take that neon green and put a punch of that in. It's going to really pop. Did somebody say Screech is good? <laughs> Screech is great. Not the bottled stuff. No, the stuff that they have to blow the dust off the old... Uh... The old stuff is great. Not the <laughs> stuff they use. Not the one they sell to tourists. <laughs> <laughs> the stuff where the old man has to blow the dust off the, the cork. Yeah. <laughs> That's the good stuff. You don't have to trim your nose hairs after you take a whiff of that. <laughs> so I've just put a little pop of that neon green over the highlights of these leaves. Watch this. I love that little zing you get. That pop of light that pops onto these leaves. It's just yummy. And you don't need a lot of color. And quite honestly, when you're painting these, don't worry about getting them perfect. <laughs> Screech? No thanks. I'd ra rather kiss the Puffins' arse. <laughs> <laughs> well then, you made your choice. <laughs> kiss, kiss the codfish. I love kiss the cut and drink your screech. Yeah. No, you have to be a person who loves bad rum to drink screech. I'm sorry. I don't drink anything brown. <laughs> if it's brown, forget well, it. Well, that's the great thing about screech. It's not brown. It's black. <laughs> yeah, well, it's dark brown. <laughs> I don't drink dark brown. Don't drink brown. Clear or red? <laughs> Clear or red? Yep, those are my options. Clear or red? So I've got that nice little highlight on there. I love that neon green. That just screaming off of there. Love it. So uh, next, I'm going to paint these berries. Now you can do them the same color as the hat and the rope. That's fine. Um, it's not going to matter one way or the other. I am a little obsessed with Red Alert right now. <laughs> I am a lot obsessed with Red Alert, sorry. Kind of like Kentucky Shine? Yeah, mm. White Lightning. It's just, it's navy rum. There's no other word for it. Yeah, it's... It's Rum Runner's Rum. 
It's cane rum. Yeah. This is what it's it is. Cool. It's made with molasses. And it's <laughs> So this is why I put that white base underneath for these berries. I wanted them to be really bright. And so I've got that white base underneath. And no matter which red you choose to do these berries with, they're going to pop. You could also just base coat them white and then shade them to make it look more perhaps like less like holly and more like um, mistletoe would be fine too. So I've got a coat of Red Alert on my berries. Now when I'm tracing on my line drawings and I come to things like these round berries, instead of trying to freehand them, I use my shape makers to put them in. She has some paint from Netherlands and Poland. Yep. So use a shape maker or your polka dot stencil to trace those circles. Shape maker is handier because you can get all of the shot, all of the shapes and all of the sizes on one sheet. Of course, I can't find my shape maker. Hello. I can find all my polka dot stencils, but not my shape maker. <laughs> Honestly. <laughs> I can find my butt with both hands today. Oh, Renee, you're so young. Okay. Well, he's young. He's not so young that he still has the new car smell, but he's, <laughs> you know, he's young. I'm younger. Yeah. So, but yeah, a shape maker, we have those on the website. Those shape makers are just a series of templates for a variety of shapes. And instead of tracing things like squares and circles freehand and where you always mess them up, um, I like the shape makers and that way I get nice round circles, nice square squares. Janet Mills is asking if any of us has had straw. Straw rum? Yes, ma'am. <laughs> yes, ma'am. <laughs> you cannot go skiing in Austria and not have straw rum. <laughs> it's also the best rum for making rumtopf. I love mm. rumtopf. Mm -mm -mm. That's a cuddle up by a fire drink. Rumtopf? Yeah. Rumtopf is a dessert. It's all marinated fruit packed in straw rum. It's a drink. <laughs> <laughs> No, you put it I on your stand cake by or your what ice I cream. Said. <laughs> you can put it over your ice cream. Nope. Oh, yes. No, nope. you put it in a glass and you drink it. And there's no real rum left by the time that's ready. I don't care. It's still tasty. It is tasty. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not disputing that. Mm, rum balls? Eh, they're okay. They're okay. Not a big fan of rum, but stro rum, the way Europeans use it, Oh, I have it hot. Yum. I'll stick with Bailey's and coffee. <laughs> yeah, that's probably your best idea. I, I, I like the fact that somebody named Janet Mills, a very... <laughs> Anglophone name. Very Anglophone, very North American name, knows about straw rum. She probably served she in Germany. Yeah, she probably worked in Germany or... Has been to Austria. Yeah. Yeah. Or just decided to go skiing. <laughs> <laughs> and somebody told her about straw. Straw. I don't ski. <laughs> I fall down. I fall down. <laughs> <laughs> I don't go to the ski hill to ski. No, I go to Apri ski. <laughs> <laughs> I go to the fire pit. <laughs> So that's where all the yum. His, his, yeah. That's where all the food is. <laughs> I worry about you. <laughs> so, most young men your age would go, that's where all the ski bunnies go. No, they're on the hill. Why would it be at the fire pit if all the ski bunnies are on the hill? <laughs> Those are skiers. Ski bunnies don't go skiing. Oh, that's true. Lived in Germany. Taught for five years. Oh. That makes sense. Yeah. Got some experience out in, uh, in Germany. Germany. It's German. It's not what we do. 
So this little guy's coming together pretty quick. So I'm going to dry this and we're going to shade and highlight those berries. <laughs> no skiing, just apres. <laughs> just apres ski. That works for me. So in the first one, in the original one, I don't have that little cluster of holly. It was kind of an afterthought when I was doing the line drawings. So I'm going to very quickly find my quarter Facebook inch. Oh no. What? No, oh, it didn't stop. Right. Facebook Live stopped? No. Is it still going? Uh, yeah, it seems to be. I've got the feed going here. So I'm going to quickly finish out those that holly and berries on the the hat. The zombie is napping. How are you going to keep up with Dot on her skis? <laughs> That's yet to be seen. <laughs> this Dot is proving to be somewhat challenging on her wheels. She can really motor. <laughs> when she chooses to, she can really motor. That is a question I'll have to answer at a later time after it snows. Yeah. We'll find out. We're looking forward to seeing how she handles the skis. Just uh, keep an eye on the Instagram. And... Yeah, keep an eye on her Instagram page. Yeah. There will be a video of her first time skiing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and there's a hill. There is a gradient. Yes. towards her favorite place. <laughs> yup. That means she just gets to the park faster. Yep. <laughs> yes, it does. She can cover a lot more ground. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to remember that brush mix that we made with the base color for that. We're going to do that again. This time we're going to use the same base color that we used for the berries. The zombie's back. And again, I come in just slightly from the edge. And when I say just slightly, it is just a little. It's like leaving a sliver around the outside edge. It's not a, raw, a wide line. It's just a sliver. And I'm going to have all of my shading going to the right. Like so. <laughs> Thank you, Sandy. You're putting the link for Dot's Instagram in the. <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> Dot the canine. You gotta check her out. Dot the canine. Yeah. It was originally supposed to be Dot H E canine, yeah. but uh, she ended up being trained for narcotics, not explosives. And I couldn't change it at the time. Yeah. Still can't actually, but it just lined up perfectly. So it's dot the canine. Yep. Even though so I've got my shading on this side. I wanted to show you something really fun. Um, fluid acrylics. She's procrastinating. Good for her. <laughs> <laughs> she put it. I, I I need to be designing and painting, and I'm procrastinating. <laughs> So I've got, um, this is the Media Sap Green. So if you don't have the Plantation Pine, I love the Media line. They're super transparent. So for all of those shadings, you can use any one of the, the fluid acrylics to replace the shading colors. So I absolutely love these. As I said earlier, Sandy has the full line of these. Lots of matte medium, lots of gesso. The one that I use, and she has the all of the fluid acrylics in right now. And they're 20% off, which is a great deal. And then um, if you're watching today and uh, use the coupon code on her website, Tracy M, all capitals, just Tracy M, and you'll get another 10% off. That's 30%. Well, it's not actually. It's or is it 20% off? off the, the, it's 20% off the retail and then another 10% off of the price. So, yeah. So 
if you're looking for fluid acrylics, especially if you want that gesso and the matte medium, because both of those are really hard to find right now. Mm -hmm. So um, she's got lots in stock right now, and she has all of the fluid acrylics. So if you're looking for these, you're going to need them soon because I'm going to be using these a lot now that they're back in production. So uh, go and check out when, uh, Sandy's site at uh, sandymctierdesigns.com. She's got all of these in, so make sure you go check her out. Yeah, the link is in the description. Link is in the description. Yeah. Click, um, it. Click it now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so excited. We got more goodies this week for yeah. giveaways um, for yeah, it's going to be more than, than Christmas. Christmas. Even more, more than 12. Yeah, there's going to be more than 12 gifts to give away. There might be 25. <laughs> there might be, yeah. We've, <laughs> I wasn't anticipating this, but we've been getting like so many donations. Decor to send us stuff. Dynasty sent us stuff. Um, I've got stuff from Sandy McTeer Designs. I've got stuff from PaintingWithDeb.com. We have stuff from Stampendous. We have stuff from Decorwork, and we have stuff from Covered Distributing and Stockade and Southern Ridge Training. And yeah, there's a lot of stuff. And TracyMoreau.net. And TracyMoreau.net. So we <laughs> have a lot of stuff <laughs> for the 4th of December. So tell your friends, make sure you join us on that day. Um, it's going to be a lot of fun. We're going to do something Christmassy, of course. No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but we're, we're going to paint something. It's not going to be a difficult one to paint. It'll be a fun and easy one. Something that um, anybody can do. You can work with what you have at home. Uh, we're going to have a lot of fun with it. We're going to try and have the pattern up. Uh, Don't hold us to the 25. <laughs> Don't hold us to the 25, but I can guarantee you it's going to be a lot more than 12. Yeah. It's going to be more than 12. It might be 25. Yeah. There's a lot. There's going to be a lot of giveaways on the, the 4th of December. <laughs> yeah. So it's, you know, all of you, all of you crafty people are going to have, somebody's going to have some really nice goodies to go home with. Uh, is your brush code for the, br uh, your code for the brush guys, Tracy M, capital T, capital M? Yep. Yeah. It is. Yep. So yeah. Um, for fluid acrylics, go check out Sandy's site because uh, one, they're still not that easy to get. Sandy was lucky to get what she got, um, but she's got lots, so make sure that um, that you go and check it out. I mean, my favorite colors are in there. Um, that's the other thing we do have. One of the giveaways for the fourth of December is a set of my favorite fluid acrylics. Somebody won an entire set of the fluid acrylics from paint. Uh... From Painting Palooza. Woo! Nice! That was Jenna Reynolds. Whole line plus a few extra bottles. Nice. nice. That's a nice prize. No kidding. Mm. All the colors. All the colors. Now, my, uh, I have a set of eight colors to give away. Yeah. Plus, I think there's a matte medium and a gesso in that, too. So that oh. somebody's getting one of those. They're getting everything they need. So, oh yeah, there's some good stuff coming. <laughs> Look, I'm so excited. Christmas is going to be early. Yeah, Christmas is coming early. You might not get it for Christmas. We're we're going to try to get it out as soon as we possibly can. Um, unfortunately, we don't have any control over the postal service, so it, it will get to you when it gets to you, but we will get them out of here as quickly as possible. And you, oh no, we're not going to talk about that. <laughs> We got something other special stuff. Yeah, we get some other special stuff coming up too. So, <laughs> so I'm going to put highlight on these berries. I'm going to. I'm just using a little bit of thinned warm white. Painters. <laughs> Painters are an obsessive bunch. Yeah, I think they're trying to develop a program. Oh. Like, like a twelve-step program. Why? <laughs> <laughs> Who wants to quit? <laughs> Uh, so I'm just using the same method that I used bring it for the black. So they can see. There you go. I'm starting my highlight right at the edge of that shadow. And again, it's just a small, narrow space. But it helps produce that more round or orb shape. Like so. Love it. 
I'm going to do the same thing to these little berries up here. These ones are really tiny, so. When did you say the pattern will be up for the fourth? For the fourth, we're going to try and have that up two weeks ahead of time. Yeah. So that um, so I want to really paint along. Yeah, I want to have it out by the 15th. So I'm hoping like Tuesday or Wednesday to have it up. Yeah. So that uh, if they're, they need to get supplies or if they need to find surfaces, etc., they'll be able to get them. You should do that one from like bare surface. Mm -hmm. Just so we can. All the get, way through. All the way do through. Do the prep, the whole thing. Yeah. Yep. That's what we'll do. Yep. Well, she'll start with a bare surface just like all y'all. Yep. And we'll paint it right from scratch, right through. Including tracing. In <laughs> including the tracing, yeah. <laughs> so I've got my highlight in place. I'm going to put just a dot of warm white on the upper left side of that highlight. Comme ça. This is a little impact point. Just to make those berries look shiny, basically. And then I want to take a little bit of that matcha green. I'm going to mix it, though. I initially did not, but I'm going to mix a little bit of that neon with it. Woo! And this is where I'm going to just stroke in that little banner. We're just going to pull in a few lines like that. There's our line in the center. Just put that twig in. I've just taken a little bit of matcha green. I threw in a little bit of, of neon green because I wasn't real thrilled with the tone of just the matcha green. So, and this is how I connect all of those things. Now, this is in his hand, so I have to think about the where his hand goes, and it's right here, so i got to put that stock to that holly branch. It's got to come out the other side. And then we're going to use a th little float of thinned warm white for this. I'm using it very thin. Lots of water. I don't want this to be super strong. So I have to form his thumb. So I'm going to put a little float like that for his thumb. And then again, I come in just slightly from the edge of that mitt. And there's that and let's put a float on this mitt as well just to give us a little highlight now i need to fix my branch because it's got to go in behind his thumb <laughs> now if you're finding your leaves don't look as crisp and as clean as you would like, or perhaps you want them to look a little softer, uh, just take a little bit of that thinned green that we used for the stems. Just put a little outline like this. It doesn't have to be perfect, but it will soften the look of those leaves a little bit. Just a very thin outline. And I am going to pull a little bit of that green up onto this little piece here because I'm not real thrilled with those. I'm thinking in hindsight I should have left them off, but I just want to define them a little bit better. So I'm using a little bit of that thinned matcha green and a little touch of white just to make them stand out a little bit. I think matcha green is probably a Americana line, right? It is. Matcha green is in the Americana line. And it's this one right here. Is that your 15 knot? This is my 15 knot, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Miss Dot is not listening to Dad this today. <laughs> 
She is misbehaving. So I'm going to come down here now into my snow and the pattern called for some Prussian blue. I like Prussian blue. I like it because it's very transparent. Um, my darling Miss Sandy uses uh, Payne's Gray a lot for the for this. I use Prussian blue. Um, but if you don't have Prussian blue, grab the Payne's Gray. It will work too. So I've just thinned it out quite a bit. And there is a little divot in the snow right about here. So I'm just putting a little float of that Prussian blue in there. And I'm going to do the same thing back here. It's just a little shadow on the snow or in the snow. And I'm going to dry this because it's not quite dark enough. But if I try to float over it right now, it's going to uh, just wash away. So I just base coated the snow down here with a little bit of warm white. I'm going to, ah, there we go. Now we're cooking with gas. I wanted that little float. You notice I took it over and up a little bit. If I just went down straight across down there, it would not work very well. Then I'm going to pull that Prussian blue all the way across like so. Oh my God, do you hear the motor running? That noise is soot. <laughs> She's in a mood. So I've got the shadow in here, but now I need to really pop this. So I'm going to grab a little bit of warm white and I'm going to float along this edge right up against that Prussian blue. And then I'm going to do the same thing back here, but I'm going to let that float overlap the Prussian. I want it to soften that a little bit. And so now we have a nice little float in there. I think I'm going to do... I think oh, good. All right, it's not uh, it's not Facebook anymore. No, it's Meta. It's Meta. <laughs> I noticed they changed the logo the other day, but yeah, the uh, a little infinity sign. Yeah. There we go. That gives us that nice little deep divot. And I'm going to dry it, and then I'm going to go over that with a little bit of a schwalten. Because I love my schwalten, but I also like to subdue colors a little bit. So I'm going to go over that with a little schwalten. It's going to do two things. It's going to deepen that float. And it's going to subdue that blue just a little bit. So if I want to really pop that white, I'm going to give it a highlight with some titanium white. You could use cool white, but I like the titanium because it is a, a brighter white, not necessarily a colder white, but a brighter white. So I'm going to take a little titanium white because I want a nice bright white back there. And along here, It brightens up our snow very nicely. And then I'm going to do the same thing right here. This is where I get to clean up any little baubles and whatnot. 
little spots that I'm not absolutely happy with. And it gives you a nice clean line and it also gives you nice contrast, all that bright white. Let's see, it. P-A-S-T, past. Past as in it's in the past? Yeah. Buenas tardes. Buenas tardes. Good afternoon. Ah. Meta one of the goofy name. I'm still calling it Facebook. <laughs> I agree. Yep. I think it's just the company Facebook is yes. rebranding, but yep. you'll still have Facebook. Yeah. And Instagram. But those two sites are owned by Meta. Yeah, when you log on to the Facebook channel, onto Facebook, it says Facebook at the top, but down at the bottom where it used to have just Facebook as the company name, yeah. it now has Meta with the little infinity symbol. Ah. Yeah. I'm going to do a little blast from the past on Dot's Instagram. Okay. I got a photo of, of us two just after certification uh -huh. for narcotics. And you can tell she's tired. Yeah. <laughs> that was a lot of work. So I'm just going on to the white of this hat, the brim of his hat, with just a little float of Eschvaltum. And I'm going in and around the beard. Now on the hat, we're just going to do this, just to create a little texture. Most of this hat is going to be covered up with that snow text anyway, but there's going to be areas that are perhaps a little thin and I want to see some of that little bit of texture and I'm going to do the same thing to the hat. To the pom-pom on the hat. So this part is not neat and tidy. It ain't pretty. <laughs> that's okay. So while that's drying I'm going to take care of our candy cane down here. I'm going to put another coat of white on it because we are going to do this beard and I want to be able to see this candy cane so that I can finish it properly. There we go. Do you see this? I never can comment and not figure out how. Yeah, we can see it. Yeah. She's on YouTube. There we go. So, I got the hat. It's got the shading in, so now we're going to start that beard. And for the beard, I am using a quarter inch rake. This is a black gold rake. And we're going to do this in two layers. I'm going to start with some... Um, warm white. Actually what I'm going to start with is a plain palette. Good gravy Marie. So I want to show you how I load this this rake brush for this. Um, kind of scares people. <laughs> We're always taught to take such good care of our brushes but I'm going to show you how to use a rake. Um, if you have a look at a rake brush it has a bit of a, a little bit of a belly, so it has the shorter bristle, it's, it, you know, to fill up this belly, and then they've added some longer bristles, so they're very fine and sparse towards the edge. So we need to load this with paint, otherwise it's not going to give us what we need. So I'm going to put a little titanium white out. So I have warm white here. I'm going to pick up a little of my Joe Sonia's. And I'm going to use the rake to pull some color out here. And I've got some Joe Sonia's in it so that it stays nice and fluid. So mix it well to make sure that it's nice and thin. About the consistency of ink. Maybe milk would be a better description. So your brush is going to look um, full. And then you're going to stand the brush on its ferrule, like so. And you're going to twist, roll the brush between your fingers. I want you to see what it looks like. So your bristles are going to do that. 
It's scary, but that's okay. It, I promise you it'll go back. So we're going to wiggle it around so that the brush is now open. And because it is, I can start just below the chin here and I'm going to put in those fine hairs. See my brush is now wide open. So I'm putting in just some nice fine hairs and I'm just following the shape of the beard but I am not painting everything in solid. It's okay if you go over that candy cane just like that. So I have layer one on. You're going to put that brush down for a second and we're going to dry this. And then we're going to take the rake again, give it a good twist to open it up. And we're going to start underneath the nose and follow the shape of that mustache. Just like that. It is going to look sparse, that's okay. And it is going to look very gray, like if you don't have you know, a nice white beard, that's okay too. So we're just establishing a little bit of texture on this beard right now. That's all we're doing. So we have texture. So I'm going to rinse out my brush and I'm going to dry this. We're going to shade underneath the mustache with a little bit of Ishvaltum. You can use um, Paints Gray or Prussian Blue if you like. I like the Ishvaltum. I just think it's warmer. It has a nice warm feel. So I'm going to thin out my Ishvaltum quite a bit. I, want, I don't want this color full straight, so I'm really thinning it out and blending it out so that it's just a little bit of color. I don't want it too dark. And I'm going to separate the beard and the mustache. And under that lip, just like that. And then you can also pull a little bit down into the beard like that. And then you're going to do the same thing under the nose, just like so. If you get a line from the float, that's okay. It's going to be hidden anyhow. So we need a nice little float there. Make sure you float right over that lip. So his beard is going to look a little bit dirty and a little bit messy for a bit. That's okay, because we're going to come back to our rake. I'm going to dry this. And again, I'm going to pull a little of that warm white out. And I'm going to open up my brush. It's so scary when you do that, because we're taught to look after our brushes, and this is not looking after your brush. And then we're going to do this again. So I'm using that little rake brush. And this is where I get to overlap a little bit. So underneath the chin, nice light touch. Am I invisible? No, you're not. So I'm using a nice light touch. I am not putting a ton of paint on. These are fine, thin lines. Open up the brush. Mixed media. Use some of the pieces of Renee's beard. <laughs> That's just creepy. I do have some white in my beard. He has a lot of red in his beard. <laughs> So this is where I like to take some of those 
brighter white fine hairs out past the edge of the beard and the mustache so that it covers. So it gets that nice soft look to it. Can you do the same thing with a wave angle? You can. Um, you can do it. works better with a wave flat, like a flat wave. But a wave angle will do it too. But it's going to take a little bit of work to get that thing to splay because it's a thick brush, right? There's a lot of filament in it. But you can get it. You can do it. Is it okay to get the paint into the ferrule? Yes, it is. You're going to get it out anyway. If you soak that brush in water, you won't have as much up there. Give it a good soak before you do this. So now, look at how fluffy his beard looks. I love it. So Janet Mills is the one who let the dogs out. Is she? Yeah. <laughs> It's all her fault. She just said, sorry, I had to let the dogs out. <laughs> okay. Uh, did you think paint for loading into a rake? Thin, um, thin the paint for loading into the rake? Yes, I did. I picked up some Joe Sonia's, pull it out from the main puddle, and it should look like milk. Like, this is really watery. And then aggressively, like I'm pushing down and really twisting to open up that brush. Look at that. That poor brush. That poor brush, right? But with a nice light touch, look what it does. I love that I can get those nice wispy lines with that rake. CD Wood is having a sale on the fluid acrylics. Yep, Miss Sandy is too. I just bought a bunch and they arrived yesterday. Wow. Whoa. So I've got all that warm white over top of that gray, but now I want to punch in a little highlight. So I'm going to dip into my titanium white with that rake. I know, it's very hard on the brush. No kidding. And I'm going to pull in a few strokes with just the titanium. And this will give you those little bright punches of white that you want. So there's our right, and it's a light, light touch. I am not pressing hard on this brush. You don't need to. You can thin with water or... Or with Joe Sonia's, either yep. or. Yep. It will work. So there is our highlight. Now we get a nice bushy beard. Mm. So... Which brings us to cleaning this little bugger. Thinking about shaving it. <laughs> You'd be very baby fists. What do they think? So, this is a harsh thing to do to that brush. Thankfully, it's not one of those brushes that we use every day. So, I'm going to put a little hand sanitizer on my palette. And I'm going to soak it. Have a look at this. Every time I press down on my brush, look at the paint coming out of the ferrule. So there is a little trick to getting that paint out. So pinch the bristles like so, and then push towards your fingers. Don't pull, push towards, and just jiggle the ferrule a little bit like that. And look at all the paint that rolls out of it. And then give it a rinse and do it again. And you'll know you've got all the paint out when you do this and nothing else comes out of the brush. If you don't see any more paint coming out of that ferrule, you'll know you've got it clean. Thank goodness for replays. I'm still trying to find my polka dot stencil. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. I have a little bin that sits on my desk. And she can't find it. And I can't find it. And it's in there. I know it's in there, but I can't find it. So I have to dig through it. But if you continue to do this, and it usually only takes two or three times. And I think I've just about got it out. There's nothing more coming out of there. So I'll give it a rinse with water. 
and then I'm going to get it good and wet and then shape it just with the tips of my fingers. I'm not pulling on the bristles, I'm just shaping them and then lay it flat to dry and it'll be ready to use the next time you need it. Nothing like a good rake brush. And I like that corner inch, especially for things this size. It's, a, it's just a great little size to work with. Uh, what size is the rake? Quarter inch? It's a quarter inch. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Well, one quarter, black gold, 206 is the uh, 206 RK, the item number. What if the paint has dried? Hand sanitizer will take out dried paint too, but let me tell you something. You do not want to use hand sanitizer on your brushes too often because it will break down the glue that holds them together. <clears throat> that being said, Decoart's uh, Deco Magic Brush Cleaner is awesome stuff for cleaning dried paint out. Uh, Jack's Studio Soap is awesome for taking out dried paint. And when really in a pinch, I will use this. Lift off. This is uh, Mustenbacher's Lift Off. The stuff you can get at Home Depot, and it will take paint off of anything. I've taken it out of blouses with this stuff. I have taken paint off of anything with this. It and is she great takes stuff. Paint out of blouses a lot. I and I uh, there. I don't own anything that doesn't have paint on it. So <laughs> <laughs> I've made it a deck <laughs> a fashion statement. <laughs> Everything I own has paint on it somewhere. Okay, so we are almost there. We just need to start adding some details. And one of the first is to... I like doing this part. I like all the fun little details. So I'm just going to add some dip dots along the edge of my scarf. You can do this with a stylus or with a brush, however you want to do it. I'm just adding a few dip dots. We're going to turn them into a little... Um, I don't know, ruffle, tassels, whatever you want to call them. Brush shaper from the brush guys? Brush shaper is a good product too. The Masters is a really good one. But when it comes to taking dried paint out of the brush, I find that Jack Studio Soap and Deck Awards Brush Cleaner, those two were the best for me. What about rubbing alcohol? Rubbing alcohol can be really harsh. And you shouldn't really be breathing that stuff in, so. Because <laughs> <laughs> it's not really alcohol. But you know what? In in an emergency, it'll work for once or twice, you know, no problem. So from those little dip dots, I'm just pulling out three little strokes. Just to give us a nice little tassel or ruffled edge on the edge of our scarf. And I want in threes. I'm going to do everything in threes. Three dots, three, you know. Fun! So now I need a little bit of country red. What about awesome? Awesome actually uh, is really good. Um, but for Canadians, it's difficult to get. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I like the Mustenbachers. Lift off. Lift off. It works just as well. Um, and it's readily available in the States. You can get awesome at some of the dollar stores, but it's not something that's readily available here. I like Murphy's oil soap. Murphy's oil soap is good. You just have to make sure you really rinse the brush as well because it is an oil. Vodka works too. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Vodka does too, but that's a terrible thing to do to a good vodka. You can do that with a bottle of Smirnoff all you want. Yeah, Smirnoff's no problem. It's kettle one, we're going to have words. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm just putting a few little red lines on my candy cane. You can make them thick, make them thin. That's entirely up to you. Now I'm going to put a little float of Prussian blue on the candy cane just for shading by the cheap vodka at Costco <laughs> is that even drinkable <laughs> well I don't know we don't sell vodka in our Costco's yeah. we don't have alcohol in our Costco's 
That is true. Grey Goose? <gasps> no. Oh. <laughs> Grey Goose, you won't care about the paint in your brushes. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> yeah, whatever. <laughs> Fair play. Fair point. I use baby shampoo to clean my brushes. That's actually a really good. Um, one of my favorite brush conditioners, believe it or not, is Tame Hair Conditioner. Really? Yep. The only place you can buy it anymore is in dollar stores. It's the only place mm -hmm. I've ever seen it. But yeah, it's a great brush conditioner. So I've got a little bit of Prussian blue. I'm just going to shade my, my candy cane here. So, yep. <laughs> Canada, we can't sell alcohol in bulk. Yeah. We can sell it wholesale, but we can't sell it in bulk. Yeah. Stupid liquor laws. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, how, how would you buy Kettle One at Costco? Like, 12 pack? Gallon. <laughs> Gallon. <laughs> it comes in a nutcracker bottle. Yeah. Sandy and I go to, uh, <laughs> I want to say booze burn, but I don't think that's right. Booze burn. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. When her and I are in Kentucky, um, just literally around the corner from our hotel is one of these. Booze burn? Liquor burn. Sorry. <laughs> is it, oh, because, you know, it, just changing one word. Yeah, it's a huge liquor store. Booze burn sounds right. Yeah. It's a huge liquor store, but we go over there. Liquor burn? Yeah, liquor burn. Liquor Mart, whatever you want to call it, but it's yeah, it's a big retail store for liquor marts in Winnipeg. <laughs> okay. Oops. So I just put a little uh, shading on my candy cane. I didn't put a whole lot of detail into it, um, but just a little bit of shading and a little highlight with the, some of the titanium white. So I think at this point we've got our scarf done. We've got we need to talk about lettering and I actually had a couple of people email me this week asking me about lettering so um <laughs> Sandy what booze barn booze barn <laughs> <laughs> liquor barn the liquor barn I think that's what it's called oh well, she's I think she's correcting you oh probably <laughs> <laughs> it's just that's the first thing that came to mind booze barn, booze barn. We know what Boone's Farm is. Tex in Texas, Costco has a separate package store attached to it for liquor sales. Okay. Wow. Wow. But it's Texas. They do everything bigger and better in Texas. Agreed. So, all right, lettering. Um, I have two riggers that I use on a regular basis. I have a number two and a zero. What do you want to bet I can't find my zero reader? Of course not. <laughs> there it is. Is that it? Yep. It's the liquor okay, burn so across from Brew Burger. Yep. <laughs> Best, oh, speaking of Brew Burger, yum. Is it? Oh yeah. Mm. They make great burgers. So these are the two riggers that I use the most often. A number two and a number zero. The number two, I can paint lettering up to a quarter inch wide. So it makes it really versatile. I can go fairly narrow or I can go really wide. And the zero is for doing the smaller stuff. There is an even smaller one than this. Um, I don't use it very often, but it, it's for really tiny, tiny lettering. Uh, but I, these are the two that I use the most often. Thankfully, these are not expensive brushes. And even more thankfully, they hold up really well because they're made with my faux squirrel. They're just, these things are bulletproof. I love these brushes. So loading a rigger. Zombies going. So again, you can use water or you can use uh, Joe Sonia's and you're going to mix your paint till it's like the consistency of milk. And your brush should look like this. So when you tap it on your palette, it's going to form a chisel edge, so it'll have a nice square edge like that. So I can open that puppy up a quarter of an inch and paint nice wide lettering. 
or I can make it quite small. So depending on how much pressure I put on that brush will decide how wide or how fine that lettering can be. What brand is the Rigger? The Rigger is a Dynasty Faux Squirrel. 1827 series. Love my Riggers. Uh, well, Texas may be bigger, but not necessarily better. Uh, I don't know. Texas. Uh. It's all relative. <laughs> mm -hmm. So I'm going to start at the top of the letter on that chisel edge, press down till the brush opens up and fills that space, and then come back up onto the chisel edge. So C, press, come on. And you will find with a little bit of practice that you can do this very smoothly. Part of the thing about lettering, I think, that, that intimidates people is that nobody thinks they have nice handwriting. And when it comes to lettering, everybody wants it utterly perfect. Stop thinking about it like it's lettering. Think about it just like you do everything else. It's a space you have to fill. So if you stop thinking about it as being this intimidating thing and just a space that you have to fill, it's easier because now you're not thinking of it as individual words. You're not thinking about it as a separate art form. You're still just painting in spaces like you do with everything else. Uh, Tracy, I ordered a Buddha board on Amazon. Can't wait to use it. I love my Buddha board. <laughs> that thing is just great, especially, you know, just to zen out for a little while. But even to practice strokes, to practice lettering, to practice all sorts of brush control techniques, it's a fabulous little tool. I forget this is a touch screen. <laughs> Costco and Alberta have attached liquor stores in as well. That's because Alberta is like Canada's Texas. <laughs> <laughs> That's why. <laughs> okay, now I can't scroll down. There we go. There we go. So I'm going to finish out this lettering. You notice I'm just doing all of the vertical pieces. I'm not worrying too much about all those little fine lines. We're going to tackle those after the fact. <laughs> Sheila's like, yeah, I'm going to say that, Renee. <laughs> My son-in-law has a distillery and makes moonshine. Hmm. Uh, legally, obviously. Yeah, obviously. <laughs> Uh, I bet that would work for brush care. Yeah, I would imagine it would. Dragon Fire Distillery. Ooh, we'll have to look that up. I'll look it up right now. See what they make. So this is where I switch to my 15 knot liner, that extra long detail liner. If you're not comfortable doing all of those little detail lines with the rigger, who said you had to? Wouldn't me. So you can take that wonderful little 15 knot liner and do your all those little details those little connecting lines whatnot with that 15 knot don't torture yourself there's no point it doesn't look like they have a website or at least i can't find it oh dragonfiredistillery.com so am i 21 or older Mm. Mentally or physically? <laughs> Either one is questionable. <laughs> <laughs> well then. <laughs> so, shop 
our spirits. Absolutely. <laughs> Shop our spirits. We can no longer ship spirits direct to customers from our website. You can only order for pickup at the distillery at this time. Yeah. Okay. So I have, I've just loaded up my 15 odd with the same white that I base, did the base coat part of this letter with. And I'm just connecting all of those spaces using that 15 knot liner. If you come across any little bobbles and wobbles that you want to fix, this is a great time to do that. Just like so. It's distilled from grain with natural flavor, distilled from a maple syrup barrel. Ooh. So that's. So I'm going to dry this. And then we're going to do a couple of things. I dug out my Duraclair Galaxy varnish. I love this stuff. You know how I can tell I love this stuff? Because there's only half a bottle left. <laughs> Are you related? To? I don't know. I don't know what the question was directed at. Oh. If you're talking about me and her, uh, yeah, that's my mom. <laughs> We're definitely related. Moonshine, that's where you say one shot, two shot, three shot, floor. Yeah. That's tequila. That's good tequila. <laughs> So you have a couple of options when it comes to this lettering. You can shade the bottom with a little bit of blue. Um, I like using either Bahama blue. In this case, I'm pulling a little of that because I want these to look like snow. I'm just using a little bit of that Prussian blue just at the bottom. Nice thin float. And it's just a little float at the base of the letter. It just gives them a little more dimension and then I'm going to shade behind this hat I want to set that lettering back a little bit and I'm going to do that with a little float of Ishvaltum just like so all it does is tuck that lettering in behind the hat and oh so <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yes, each other. This is my first live with, with yeah. I am enjoying. <laughs> okay, yeah, that's my mom. Yeah, I'm the dorky son. Yeah, the dorky son. He's the one that got the, the zombie up there and can't get rid of it. <laughs> yeah, I can't get rid of that dang zombie. We're just gonna have to live with it. I can't find my. I'm yeah. looking for oh, my fact is black. Do you varnish before using snow text? No, Ooh. I don't. Why? Um, no particular reason. I just, I use matte spray. Uh. So um, I seal with matte spray, not with varnish. But yeah, no, I don't. I tend not to use uh, varnish all that frequently, to be honest. I seal everything with matte spray, so... When I do varnish something, it's usually with um, the ultra matte varnish or the soft touch varnish. Those are my two favorites. Turn the zombie into a turkey <laughs> for Thanksgiving. <laughs> well, for us, the Thanksgiving's done and over with. Yeah. <laughs> Our Thanksgiving is over. So I'm just cleaning up all my graphite lines with that Factus Black. I use this one because I really don't like my dark backgrounds getting shiny spots or wear spots and I really hate it when an eraser pulls my color off. I get a little cranky. So um, I like the fact it's black for that reason that it doesn't it doesn't damage my paint, it doesn't uh, pull things off my background, it doesn't leave shiny spots everywhere because that drives me nuts and it effectively removes graphite. So there we go. I don't like the rough lines around the edges of the lettering either. So, how do you spray varnish when it's cold? 
Um, I don't spray varnish when it's cold. I take it out in the garage and spray it there. Um, but I've been known to collect things up for weeks until I, <laughs> I have a nice day to take them outside and do them if I need to. Do you, do, do you all slaughter turkeys for Thanksgiving? We do. Uh, no, we? Not always. No. Sometimes it's ham. Yep. Sometimes it's turkey. Prime rib. Prime rib. Yep. Whatever's on Christmas. sale. <laughs> <laughs> Christmas is usually prime rib or turkey. Yep. Sometimes it's lamb. Ah, oh, that lamb. <laughs> Oh God. Hmm. So my next step for this piece is to spatter it with a little bit of thinned warm white. I'm using a, just a foliage brush that I get sitting there and I'm using it very fine. I use the toothbrush method because <laughs> if I tried the tap method like my darling Sandy does, <laughs> make a hell of a map out of a doubt that this is just the safest method for me. So I put just a light spatter. Ooh, it says video interrupted. No, it says it should resume shortly. Okay. Um, Factus Black Eraser. And my stencil brush. I'm not making them fully opaque. So go easy with the color. We just want them sort of there. And I'm using the smaller snowflakes in this. And I'm that brush is almost dry. I don't want a ton of color on there. I have no idea what's going on. There's a lot of people saying it's, it's all messed up. It seems fine on this end. I've got a nice clear feed. I'm going to check YouTube. He's going to go check it out. Oops. Oh, please tell me that didn't... Uh... Oh, no. So I'm just popping in a few snowflakes here and there. I don't want a ton of them. And I like these smaller ones. For this I just think they're they fill up some of the negative space but they also help give us a little bit of dimension so pop one in here again not a ton of paint I don't want these to be fully opaque and then I think we need one we, good? we need one little one over here I think yeah it looks good on this end okay Be good there so good on Facebook. now I've got all my snowflakes in place, uh, but there was something that, you know, I have these crazy little afterthoughts, right? Because that's just how I think <laughs> or not, I depending. Later. So um, I was cruising around looking at my friend Karen's website. Uh, Karen's the owner of um, Southern Ridge Trading. She's made a whole bunch of changes to her product lines. She's made changes to her website. And oh my gosh, I could, I could spend hours on her site. So she's got these fabulous laser cut snowflakes. They're incredible. And they're cut on a really good quality chipboard. Um, so they take paint like a dream. The only downside is how the heck do you paint all these little tiny details and get them so that they're not messed up. Obviously, putting a brush on them isn't going to work. So this is what I did. I found one of these sponge bobbers. Daubers? Sponge bobbers? Daubers. No, sponge bob. <laughs> <laughs> Bunny leaves. <laughs> so I just picked up a little bit of white paint. You good? On there. I'm okay. <laughs> I just had a moment. Sorry. The drugs kicked in. <laughs> I haven't taken any. No. So I've got a little bit of white paint. And instead of cutting them all out and then trying to paint them, I just left them in the grid and I just tapped the paint on with the sponge. There's Deb. And oh my gosh, I got a, something else I got to show you because this is just too flipping cool. So I've got white paint on my snowflakes. I'm going to do a couple of these little small ones. 
But look at this. Ta -ta 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 -ta. I love this. This just works so well to paint those little delicate snowflakes. So having done that, I'm going to grab some matte medium. Apparently Deb has also got a new website coming soon. She does. Wow. Deb's been a busy girl. So I'm going to pick up a little bit of that matte medium on my same sponge and I'm just going to tap a little matte medium onto those snowflakes. This is just so flipping awesome. So I'm just leaving them in that grid and then I'm going to move my matte medium off to the side and I should probably put a piece of paper underneath this because, you know, it's going to make a mess. So, I need a new website coming soon. Hint, hint, Renee. <laughs> Am I developing a new logo for you? <laughs> so I'm just going to sprinkle a little bit of Glamour Dust right over these wet snowflakes. These are just so cool. Karen makes the most amazing things. You gotta, if you aren't familiar with her stuff, go check her out because she is phenomenal. Uh, go to chipboard.ca is the name of her website. And I'm going to tap that. Look at this. Gore just sparkly snowflakes, flipping amazing. Now, getting them out of that grid is super easy. Grab your, I'm gonna use my, uh, decoupage scissors. I've got a little embroidery scissors, something really fine. And you can just simply snip them out like so. So you could paint a whole bunch of these snowflakes all at once. And then just leave them in the grid because they're safer in the grid. And then just clip them out as you need them. Do you always use a new stencil brush on this show? Uh, no. <laughs> I don't. <laughs> You're probably older than I am. Well, no. <laughs> I'm not quite that old, but no. I, um, I clean up my stencil brushes. Usually I have 10 or 12 that I have to do in the run of a day, but um, I clean them up and I reuse them. <laughs> because I'm using white paint, they look like they're new. But no, they're not. I You can see right in there, there's still a lot of paint from, you know, they do pick up and get stained depending on the color. So, so now I have these wonderful snowflakes. I'm going to trim that one because it's not quite what I want. There we go. Am I doing logos for Sandy again? <laughs> I'm confused. Why is it wink, wink, Renee? She was. <laughs> Or hand hand to Renee. Maybe she wants you to build her a website. I haven't built a website in God knows how long. <laughs> you don't want anybody to build you a website. Her. Hers is awesome. So I'm just going to put a little bit of matte medium on the back. I do multimedia. Of these uh, snowflakes. <laughs> I need a new website. <laughs> <laughs> All capital letters from Sandy. <laughs> So, and then I can pick and choose where I put that snowflake. So I, this was just me on a whim the other day because I just, it felt it needed more dimension. I'm an idiot. So you could do it by putting a little glob on there and then dropping your snowflake into it. I absolutely love snowflakes, dimensional snowflakes in particular. I just think they're so pretty. So there we have it. I love that. I love how that looks. This is just, I'm sorry, I'm an idiot because I just, I can't leave well enough alone. <laughs> so I have to try out other things. And I really just loved these snowflakes when I saw them and I thought, oh my gosh, they would be just so perfect for a little extra dimension on some pieces, much like I did with this little guy. I love this little foam stand. I think he's too stinking cute. Um, and same idea, I just used some of those little chipboard type snowflakes on 
that. But then, you know, Karen Beaupre has to show me these beautiful things. So <laughs> then I have to have those too. So I know I'm in love with these. These are so delicate. They're so pretty. And because they're in that grid, you can easily paint them without breaking them because they are fragile. But once they're adhered to a surface, they're perfect. So I'm going to close up my matte medium and close up my glitter because I think we've done enough glitter for Renee for one day. Thank you. Renee's not a glitter fan. Nope. Never have been, never will be. <laughs> so then we get to play with some snow text because I love this stuff. Didn't I do a design for Sandy? Yep. Did she get it? Yeah. I'm looking at her webpage. Oh my goodness. I'm having a hard time getting the snow text out of this bottle. I don't know why. Where's your logo? <laughs> Where's the nice pretty logo that I made you? I gotta find my... Uh. I think my... My snow text bottle is clogged. <laughs> You're an artist, not an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> Where do you get the snowflakes? These ones, I have, I have these on my website. They're just, they're beautiful. Yeah, but they're from, they're from Southern Ridge Trading. Yeah, Southern Ridge Trading is the manufacturer. Yeah. And they're fan freaking tastic. Okay, I was going to squeeze it out of this little tube, but that's not going to work because there's something clogging it. So I'm just going to put some on my palette. Oh my god. It's snow text. My, my yeah, thingy is plugged. Is it? Yeah. yeah. It's okay. I can do it this way. So I'm going to grab my little filbert. And we're going to... I would have just put like curly cues of snow text on there. Um, so I'm just going to take my it's brush and a filbert. Oh, I just, I couldn't get it to go. I can't squeeze it hard enough. That's my problem. Yeah. I thought it was clogged, but I think it's just me. So I'm just going to put this snow tex on so that it just comes to the edge of the hat. And then it's a little thinner as it gets in behind that beard. And the mustache. I like leaving a little gap there, just a little one, in and around it because it's small going to hole. set that back. It's just a really small hole. Yeah. So I'm just taking that snow text and moving it around. I'm leaving that little gap. I want to see a little gap there. There you go. How are we doing? Just like that. Is Matte Medium a DecoArt product? It is DecoArt Media. And I'll tell you right now, if you need some, go check out Sandy McTeer's website. She's got it on sale this week. And you'll get an extra 10% off if you use a coupon code TRACYM. All capitals. All capitals, yep. So throw a little love her way if you're looking for stuff. Sandy's got tons of product on her site too. She's got uh, some Tim Holtz stamps. She's got Tim Holtz products. And then Miss Deb. Miss Deb has been doing the most incredible things lately. Do you have the Snowtex writer? I don't. That is a Deckwart product. You can find that on Deckwart.com. And any one of their distributors, especially at this time of year, they're bound to have it. So if you're in Canada, check out stockade.ca or countrybear.com, countrybearwood, I should say, dot com, creations country bear. Sandy McTeer Designs website is in the description below. It should be a clickable link. You should just click it and off you go. Yep. You can take it right there and you can shut up and you drop. And on mine, we've got some new patterns up. Um, 
There's a couple of people were grumbling they weren't able to find the little gnome, um, the freebie, the little gnome pen freebie. Oh yeah. Um, but it's in the freebie section of the website. Oh excuse me. Okay, so I've got a little bit of snow tax on his hat and on the pom pom, and I'm going to jazz that up just by sprinkling a little bit of mm -hmm. glamour dust in there. Do this while the snow tax is wet. <laughs> but don't click now. Watch Tracy to the end. <laughs> and then I to seat it, I just tap the edges or underneath. And that will help seat the, gladder, the glitter into that snow text. And then um, take your sheet of paper, stand it up on its edge, and just tap to knock off the excess. I didn't put a ton on there, so I don't have too much excess. And then, but the only thing you have left to do to finish this out is this. I like to see my edges finished. I always find if I go to a craft sale, I prefer to see things finished back, front, and the edges. And I am particularly fond of this method. I use these gold paint pens and just go along the edge. And if you put it in just the right spot, it'll give you a nice little thin gold bead along the front at the same time. And it will finish your edges really nicely. Ooh. Oof. This pen has seen better days. Did you put the snow in a bottle and add water to it to squeeze it out? No, actually it comes in a squeezable format. So it's already in the right consistency to squeeze out of that bottle, unfortunately. And I have arthritis and my hands are bothering me, so um, I didn't have the squeeze power I needed to get it out of that bottle. Squeeze power! So, I just put a little bit of gold paint along the edges of this surface. Do you spray over your glitter? I do. And if I feel it's not sparkly enough, I will put a little more on. And... Where was this? After the snow text dries, can you add shading to it? Absolutely. You can use thin washes of a light blue or a little bit of asphaltum. If you really want to pop that texture, go right ahead. It will take paint. Do you have a link for the gold pen? Do, do, do sound is back yeah okay <laughs> so i'm just going to repeat what i said you can find these on um on amazon i get them on amazon locally because that's just the easiest for me um they are available at walmart in the states that you can also find them on dick blick and you can find these ones at hobby lobby but any gold paint pen will do the job but this is the one that i like the most i like the gold it's a nice shimmering gold the other thing I like is that it's also available in these extra fine versions. And this is usually what I sign my pieces with. So I put my little scribbler in the corner with these. I love these. Marvi Yoshida Deco Color. They're liquid gold, premium gold paint pens. I love these. And they come in silver as well, but I use the gold the most. These are my favorites. So there is our... Little Santa, I think he's fun. How does Sandy get those links up so fast? I don't know. I have no idea. The girl is a wizard when it comes to working with that phone. <laughs> Bang! Done. Yep. There I, you go. I think she copy and pastes them. Like, she's got a whole list hidden somewhere. I, I think somewhere. she's got, like, a Word document open somewhere. I, she, she must. Like that. Click. There. Done. <laughs> I don't know.
<laughs> God love her. She does it really quick. Okay. Am I switching cameras? So not yet. We're going to talk about. So everything that I showed you on this little guy here is exactly the same for these little fellows. So the techniques are exactly the same. Uh, the only difference is that, you know, these are the little fellows here, but these are really super plain, but again, you can do the stenciling. You can add those dimensional snowflakes. Um, I would use the smaller snowflakes on these little tags. I just think that these are super cute. So if you're, if you can paint these, you can paint that and vice versa, because this is really not rocket science. These are fun little pieces for the holidays. This one I've got, um, rocket surgery. <laughs> it's rocket surgery. I've got um, some black and white and some red and white buffalo check ribbon I'm going to hang this with. I just think he's super cute. And really easy. Nope, just fast uh, fast Google and fast typing. Yep. She's just quick like a bunny, that girl. Oh, where are the sleeves on the sweater? There they are. <laughs> okay. Is it inside out? <laughs> it's inside out and backwards. <laughs> Jeez. Good thing the oh, camera's not on you no yet. No kidding. So what is wrong with that woman? <laughs> <Is> she <laughs> having a seizure or something? Is she okay? <laughs> not so much. She needs Jesus. <laughs> she needs something. Uh, let me switch. Please cameras. switch cameras. I'm gonna switch cameras. There we go. I need mean, Jesus. Yeah, probably. <laughs> <laughs> or at least some wine. Well. T for now. T. T. I ran out so, <laughs> Oh no, there's still coffee in here. Uh -oh. uh, this this little guy was a lot of fun to paint. I hope you guys enjoyed him. I think he's I think he was fun. Um we do have a really nice project coming up for December 4th. We didn't do any. We didn't do the giveaway, so he's gotta sort that out. <laughs> so he's gonna go take care of that. While he's doing that, I gotta tell you guys a few things. Um members. I got a class coming up on the 29th. I know it's a Monday, not a Tuesday, but I have a previous engagement on the Tuesday, so we had to move it to the 29th. So we have a class on the 29th. Uh, get your festive on because we're going to have some fun. I have a few things planned for you guys that you haven't seen yet. So we're going to have a little bit of fun that night. Um, I also am going to start looking for your mailing addresses, members, because we have some little gifties that are going out to all of you. For those of you who have been with me from the very beginning, you've got something special coming your way. And uh, for everybody else, we are continuing to do those Saturday lives uh, right through and up to the holiday. I'm so excited. I So be prepared to do a lot of Christmas stuff because I'm just, I'm in Christmas mode. I can't wait. I love Christmas stuff. Oodles and oodles of Christmas stuff. Holy crap. And um, I wanted to tell you that if you have a request of something you'd like to see taught or something you'd like to see done or whatever you want, just let me know. Um, if you go to the, my website down in the lower right hand corner, it's going to be a polka dot with a little speech bubble in the middle of it. Just click on that and you can send me a message with your ideas or your requests or your questions. Feel free to send them to me. I'm happy to answer. Are you waiting for things to spin? No. What are you waiting for? 29th? 29th. It might have to change, but we'll see. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So we may have to change the date, but yeah, yeah we shall we, see. We might have to do it sooner? We might. Than yeah. the 29th? We might. We might. Anyway, we'll sort that out. But in the interim, I'm waiting for him to hit that spin on this thing. Boom. You need to just... <laughs> four names. We need four names. Four names. So he's got the spinner going. Oh man, is there ever a lot of names on that wheel today? Yes. No. Jessica Killer. <laughs> <laughs> been a while since she won something. It has been a little a little bit. But she's, she never misses. She's here every Saturday. So, yeah, I know. The more often you watch, the more often you, 
you know, when you comment, you hit the she's like a button. Moderator. And she's one of our moderators, and so Jessica's really good about keeping folks in line. <laughs> <laughs> Same with Sandy. Sandy's good at, at making sure everybody gets the info they need. She's awesome. Okay. Uh, I will not remove them from the, the <laughs> names. So name number two. I don't even know if she's still on. She may not be. That's okay. Oh, you have Jessica's shipping information. Anne McGough. Anne that McGough is, is winning. She's won a couple of times before, too, I think. I believe so. Yep. So, Anne, I have your shipping information, Anne. Don't worry about it. Yeah, that. I just we, finished. We just packed an order for you. <laughs> So uh, Jessica Killer and Anne McGock both going to get a set of stencil brushes and uh, some galaxy glitter and a Christmas ornament kit. That'll I'm be. I'm gonna it. make sure the bottles open. <laughs> <laughs> so you know how I feel. <laughs> no, you won't. <laughs> So uh, both Anne and Jessica are going to get those, and we have a craft gasm bag with some goodies in it. We've got two of those going out too. That wheel is never as quick as I think, or no. slow. It never slows down fast enough. In two more days. Ta-da! Really? <laughs> Spin it again. <laughs> <laughs> Just to let you know. Jessica Killer and came up a second time, so. Yeah, she came up a second time. Yeah. That's kind of not fair. How it did that, I don't know. So, spinning again. <laughs> and thanks, guys, for sticking it out with us today. We've got a couple of little glitchy things happen. I don't think it's on our end because everything seemed to be moving smoothly here. But uh, we appreciate you sticking it out with us. There we go. Judy Hager is our winner. You're getting a craft gas and bag with some goodies in it. And we got one more to give away. Yep. And. Excuse me, excuse me. There we go. And I'm going to remind you guys December 4th. Wheel is broken. <laughs> <laughs> December 4th, 12 noon Eastern Standard Time is our 12 Days of Christmas event. We have a ton of giveaways for that day. Unfrickin' believable. The amount of stuff that has arrived at this place is insane. <laughs> My bestie, Deb Antonick, won a craft gas bag. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Deb, I know where you live, so I'll just send you <laughs> send you your little bag of goodies. I have a box for you that's got to go out tomorrow anyway. So, all right, guys, that's it for us this week. Thanks so much again for sticking it out with us. We appreciate it, even though it gets glitchy. Um, it's, feed on this end was going smoothly, but... I have but one. I, Oh, she has one? <laughs> she has one. All right, I'm spinning again. He's spinning again. Okay, quickly. We do it. So you can see. <laughs> There's the wheel. You can see it. <laughs> Who is it? Oh, I was going to say. <laughs> yeah, like... Carol Archer. Carol Archer is our winner. <laughs> That was lovely. You got to see like all the mess, the crap that's piled up everywhere, the garbage can. <laughs> lovely. Very stylish. <laughs> okay, Carol, um, I'm not sure if we have your shipping information or not, but uh, click on the little speech bubble in the lower right-hand corner of my website on the homepage and send us a quick message with your shipping information and we'll get your goodies out to you as soon as we can. To everybody else, Thank you so much for joining us every week. We really love it. And we have a lot of fun doing this. So um, next week, we've got another fun-filled festive day planned for you guys. <laughs> and then uh, hopefully by uh, Wednesday or so, the pattern for December 4th will be up. So you will be able to, um, if you're interested in painting along, you'll be able to have it in plenty of time. And you'll be able to find surfaces and supplies and whatnot that you need for December 4th. So... 
Having said all of that, guys, we love you. Thanks for joining us and stay safe. See ya.